Welcome back, everyone. Today's deep dive is going to be uh, pretty interesting, I think. We're oh, yeah. Cracking open chapter two of Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. Ah. You send over this audio reading of it, and mm-hmm. I'm I'm excited to dig in. I have a feeling we're going to find some yeah. really great stuff. Absolutely. It's, it's so fascinating. You know, Meditations wasn't even written for an audience. Oh, really? It was basically his journal. Oh, wow. Like his own personal thoughts and reflections on how to live a good life, even while ruling an empire. Right. And he jumps right in. Yeah. Chapter two starts with what I kind of think of as a morning mantra. Okay. Like a reminder to expect difficult people in our day-to-day lives. Right. You know, the gossipy coworker. Yeah. The perpetually grumpy neighbor. Yeah, we all know those types. We all know them. For sure. And what's interesting is that Marcus Aurelius doesn't tell us to fight fire with fire. Yeah. He suggests that we look at these behaviors as stemming from a lack of understanding. Yeah, lack of awareness. He says they just don't grasp what's truly good and evil. Mm -hmm. I'll admit my first reaction was easy for you to say emperor. Right. But then I came across this line that kind of shifted my perspective. Mm -hmm. We are made for cooperation, like feet, like hands, like eyelids. It's such a powerful image because it highlights how interconnected we are. Mm-hmm. You know, Aurelius is saying that we're not just isolated individuals. Right. We're part of a larger whole working together, whether we realize it or not. Right. So maybe that frustrating coworker is just having a bad day. Yeah. Or maybe they just haven't been shown a better way to be. Right. It makes their actions less about me and more about just our shared human experience. I love that. So how do we ap- apply this stoic wisdom in our modern lives. Well, you know, so easy to get caught up in the chaos. Mm-hmm. So how do we actually create that space for reflection and and actually put these ideas into practice? Well, it all starts with awareness. Okay. You know, Marcus Aurelius tells us to throw away thy books. He does. And of course, he wasn't literally saying to toss out every book, right. but more that we shouldn't get so caught up in information or theories or distractions yeah. that we forget about our own inner development. So what are the books that we might be clinging to today? Yeah. It's pulling our attention away from what's truly important. Yeah. Think about the constant flood of news and social media updates. Oh, yeah. Even the pressure to always be connected. All right. All these things can become modern day books that keep us from focusing on our inner ruling part. That inner reeling part being our mind. Yeah. Our mind, our reason. It's like we're so busy consuming all this information. Yeah. That we forget to process it Mm -hmm. and actually reflect on it and connect it to our own lives. Exactly. And that's where the real work begins. Yeah. Cultivating our inner world, you know, Mm -hmm. strengthening that ruling part. Right. So we can respond to those difficult people and situations with wisdom and clarity. We can become more like the calm in the eye of the storm instead of getting swept away by all the chaos. It's like Aurelius is saying, before you try to change the world, yeah. make sure you're tending to your own inner garden first. Absolutely. And and that brings us to another key point in Chapter 2. Okay. The idea of accepting what we can't control. Okay. Marcus Aurelius believed that everything is guided by providence, mm-hmm. even things that seem random or driven by chance. So it's not about giving up right. or becoming passive. It's recognizing that there are forces at play larger than ourselves. Yeah. And sometimes the best course of action is to just accept what is. Exactly. The Stoics believed there's a rational order to the universe, even if we don't always understand it. It's kind of like the weather. Okay. You can't control if it rains or shines. Right. But you can choose how you respond to it. Right. We can complain or we can just grab an umbrella and make the best of it. Right. That makes sense. Aurelius actually uses this this incredible (laughs) analogy to illustrate this point. He talks about how the universe is preserved by the changes of the elements. It's beautiful. It is just as fire transforms wood into ash and water nourishes the earth. Everything is in constant flux, changing according to a larger plan. And when we fight against that flow, we're just creating suffering for ourselves. Right. But when we accept what we can't control, Mm. we create space for peace and even opportunity. It's all starting to feel very zen. Like it's about surrendering to the present moment, trusting the process, and focusing our energy on what we can influence our own thoughts and actions. And responses. And responses. You've got it. And that ties into another theme in this chapter. The urgency of living fully in each moment. Aurelius reminds us, 
Remember how long thou has been putting off these things? Um, like he's calling us to action. He he's saying, stop procrastinating on living a virtuous life. Yeah. Okay. And it's a wake up call. It is. It's like he's saying, stop waiting for the perfect moment to start living your best life. Yeah. That moment is now. It is. And and there's this powerful stoic concept mm -hmm. that I think really underlies this sense of urgency, memento mori, yeah. remembering our mortality. Right. You know, it might seem kind of morbid. It does. But it's a powerful tool for living more intentionally. It is. When we remember our time is limited, we're less likely to waste it on I things that don't matter. Mm -hmm. It's such a powerful shift in perspective. It is. Instead of steering death, yeah. we can use it as a motivator yeah. to live more fully, yeah. to appreciate every moment, mm -hmm. and to make choices that are aligned with our values. Exactly. And that brings us to one of the most profound insights that I think Aurelius offers in this chapter. Okay. And really throughout meditations, mm -hmm. he observes that Unhappiness often stems from dwelling on external circumstances okay. or trying to figure out what other people are thinking. True happiness, he says, lies in cultivating our own inner virtue. So instead of chasing external validation mm. or material things, right. we should be focusing on our own character, yeah. our inner strength, mm. our sense of purpose. Exactly. And and that's a radical idea even today. It is. You know, we're constantly bombarded with messages telling us to seek happiness in external things. Right. A bigger house, a fancier car. Yeah. More followers. More followers. But Aurelius is saying yeah. true contentment comes from within. It's about focusing on what we can control. Yes. Our own thoughts, actions, mm -hmm. and responses to the world around us. And choosing virtue over fleeting pleasure. Right. Recognizing that that lasting fulfillment comes from living in alignment with our values. You're exactly right. Yeah. And to achieve this, Aurelius emphasizes controlling our desires and emotions. He <laughs> even references Theophrastus, yeah. who argued that offenses committed through desire are more blameworthy mm. than those committed through anger. So it's not just about avoiding anger, right? but understanding the deeper motivations behind our actions. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Think about it. When we lash out in anger, mm -hmm. it's usually impulsive. Right. But when we act out of desire, okay. we're making a choice mm -hmm. to pursue something that might not be in our best interest yeah. or might even harm others. It's like that saying, desire is a powerful drug. It is. We get so fixated on what we want yeah. that we lose sight of the bigger picture mm -hmm. and we might even compromise our values. Exactly. The Stoics believe that true freedom comes not from indulging every whim, mm -hmm. but from mastering our impulses. Okay. Choosing virtue over instinct gratification right you know those fleeting pleasures often have consequences so how do we actually cultivate that self-control well this seems like a pretty big task it is especially in our world of instant gratification yeah it starts with awareness okay being mindful of our desires and how they influence our thoughts and actions <laughs> And it's a process. Yeah. Even Marcus Aurelius struggled with this. Oh, wow. He was an emperor with immense power. Right. And even he grappled with these challenges. Which brings us to a theme that runs throughout the chapter. Yeah. Living in accordance with nature. Mm hmm It seems like Aurelius is saying that if we want to be happy and fulfilled, yeah. we need to align our actions with the natural order of the universe. Yeah. And this is where Stoicism gets really interesting. Yeah. Because the Stoics believed that the universe is governed by a rational order, mm. this logos. No. And by understanding and aligning ourselves with this natural law, right. we can find true happiness and fulfillment. So it's like a call to reconnect with our roots. Yeah. To step back from all the chaos mm. and observe the wisdom that's already in the natural world. I love that. And remember, the Stoics believe that nothing is evil, which is according to nature. Right. And that includes death. It does. Which Aurelius addresses with remarkable composure. Yeah, he does. He basically says it's just a natural process. Yeah. A simple dissolution of the elements. You're right. It's like he's stripping away all the fear and drama yeah, that they yeah. usually associate with death. Right. And in doing so, he's freeing us to focus on living a virtuous life Yay. in the present. Because if we're constantly preoccupied with death, mm -hmm. we're missing out on the beauty of life that we have right now. Yeah, the wonder of it all. And that brings us back to the role of philosophy in Aurelius's thinking. Okay. He says one thing, and only one philosophy can guide us. And for Aurelius, that philosophy was Stoicism. 
Yeah. He saw it as a practical roadmap. Oh, wow. For navigating the challenges of life and finding inner peace. I have to say, after diving into this chapter with you, yeah. I'm starting to understand why Stoicism is having a resurgence. Me too. It's like a framework for dealing with life's ups and downs mm -hmm. with grace and resilience. Yeah. Which feels incredibly relevant today. For sure. But before we wrap up this part of our deep dive, yeah. there's one more thing we need to explore. Okay. Aurelius's perspective on the fear of death. That's a great point. Yeah. It's a topic most people shy away from. Right. But Aurelius confronts it. Yeah. And in doing so, he offers a profoundly different way to think about it. I'm ready to dive in. Yeah. What does Aurelius have to say about facing our mortality? Yeah. And how can his perspective help us live better lives today? Mm. So we're talking about death, yeah. a subject that makes a lot of people uncomfortable. It does. But this is where I think Aurelius' wisdom really comes through. It does. He has this matter-of-fact way of talking about death mm -hmm. that takes away some of the scariness. Yeah, he does. Instead of seeing death as this big, scary ending, right. Aurelius presents it as just a natural part of life. Mm -hmm. Like a so He's saying death is just another transformation. Right. No different from all the changes happening around us all the time. I see how this connects back to his idea of living in accordance with nature. Me too. If we accept that change is fundamental, yeah. then death becomes lo less about the end right. and more about a transition. Exactly. And by facing our mortality yeah. without all the emotional baggage, right. we can appreciate the preciousness of life even more. Yeah, when you realize your time is limited, yeah. you don't want to waste it. Exactly. Yeah. It makes you want to grab life. It does. And squeeze every drop of experience out of it. Absolutely. And that's the beauty of it. Yeah. It's not about dwelling on death. Mm -hmm. It's about using it to live more fully. Right. To enjoy each moment and right. make choices that align with your values. It's like a wake-up call. It reminds me of that quote. Yeah. Life is not about finding yourself. Mm -hmm. Life is about creating yourself. I love that. I think Aurelius would agree. He believed we have the power to shape our own lives. Right. To choose virtue and make a positive impact. Even in the face of our own mortality. Exactly. So we've talked about accepting what we can't control, mm -hmm. living in alignment with nature, yeah. and facing our mortality with courage, yeah. and even a sense of wonder. That's a lot for one chapter. It is. Mm. What do you think is the most important takeaway for our listener? That's a good question. Yeah. I think the main message is that we need to focus on what we can control. Okay. Our thoughts, mm -hmm. our actions, yeah. our responses to the world. Okay. Everything else is out of our hands. So it's not about forcing our will on the world. Right. What about cultivating inner strength? Exactly. When we let go of the need to control things mm. and instead focus on mastering our minds, mm. we gain a greater sense of freedom. We become less reactive and more intentional. It sounds like it takes a lot of self-awareness and discipline. To cultivate that kind of inner strength, mm -hmm. where do we even begin? Yeah. Well, Marcus Aurelius gives us a good starting point Okay. right here in Chapter 2. Okay. He talks about recognizing our own ruling part. Mm -hmm. Our mind and reason. Right. This is the part of us okay. that can observe our thoughts, mm -hmm. make choices, right. and guide our actions. So we have this inner observer. Yeah. This wise counsel. Yes. But like any skill. Okay. This takes practice. Yeah. Even Aurelius struggled with it. Did he? Oh, yeah. He reminds himself throughout the book. Does he? To return to his ruling part. Wow. To not get swept away by his emotions. It makes him seem so much more human. Yeah. I mean, he was an emperor. I know. Ruling one of the most powerful empires ever. Mm -hmm. And he's dealing with the same stuff we are. He is. It's kind of comforting. It is. And it reminds us that these stoic principles, yeah. they aren't just for philosophers and emperors. They're for everybody. Yeah. They're tools we can all use right. to find more peace and purpose in our lives. I love that. So how do we put these ideas into practice? Yeah. It's one thing to talk about mastering our minds. Right. But it's another to actually do it. It is. And that's the beauty of stoicism. Okay. It's not passive. Okay. It's about actively engaging with life. Okay. Making choices that lead to virtue. So it's not about just enduring challenges. Right. It's about using them to grow. Exactly. Like how do we cultivate that ruling part? Well, what, what are some concrete steps? One practice the Stoics liked was journaling. 
journaling. Yeah. It's a way to reflect, mm -hmm. to examine your thoughts. Right. And see patterns in your behavior. Like taking your mental temperature. Yeah. What else can we do? What else? Mindfulness is a powerful tool. Okay. It's about paying attention to the present moment. Right. Without judgment. Yeah. Just noticing your thoughts and feelings. So instead of just reacting automatically. Right. We're taking a pause. Yes. And that pause yeah. can be transformative. It can. Oh, yeah. It lets us choose virtue. Okay. Instead of just being impulsive. Right. To act with wisdom. Wow. It sounds like it takes a lot of practice. It does. But the rewards seem huge. Yeah. More peace of mind, mm -hmm. stronger relationships. Yeah. A deeper sense of purpose. You got it. And it all starts with the power of your own mind. Mm. Marcus Aurelius said, the happiness of your life depends on the quality of your thoughts. So we've talked about some pretty big topics. Okay. Death, desire, the universe, even the ruling part of ourselves. It's been a lot. It has. Mm -hmm. But I feel like we're just scratching the surface. Me too. As we go deeper into meditations, yeah. I think you'll see these themes keep coming up. Aurelius is giving us a toolkit yeah. for navigating life. He is. Filled with wisdom that's just as relevant now as it was back then. That's why meditations are so popular. Yeah. It speaks to the timeless human challenges, hmm. dealing with difficult people, making sense of suffering, living a meaningful life even though we're all going to die. You know, as we're talking, yeah. I keep thinking back to his advice about difficult people. Yeah. It's not always easy. It isn't. But I'm starting to see how powerful it can be. It really is. And it connects to his emphasis on understanding the natural order of things. Mm -hmm. We can't control the elements or the stars. Oh, yeah. We can't control other people. So instead of getting upset yeah. when someone does something we don't like, mm. we can try to see their behavior as part of a larger pattern. Yeah. Like the tides. Exactly. By accepting that we can't control them. Yeah. We free ourselves from that emotional turmoil. It's about taking responsibility for our own inner state. It is. No matter what's happening around us. It's about choosing how we respond. Right. Instead of letting our emotions control us. That's a key part of stoicism. It is. Recognizing that we always have a choice. Yeah. In how we respond. Mm -hmm. So instead of reacting without thinking, Right. We can take a moment, pause, observe yeah. our thoughts and feelings, yeah. and then decide how to respond. That pause, yeah. that moment of awareness, mm. that's where the magic happens. It is. It lets us choose virtue over impulse. Right. We can act from understanding yeah. instead of just reacting. Which brings us back to the ruling part. Yeah. Our mind and reason. Our inner compass. Right. Guiding us toward wisdom and virtue. But we need to be aware of it. We do. And yeah. remember, Marcus wow. Aurelius had to work at it, too. Oh, wow. He had to constantly remind himself yeah. to come back to his ruling part. That makes him seem so normal. It does. An emperor yeah. with all that power mm -hmm. still facing these challenges. He was human, just like us. So how do we actually cultivate this awareness? Yeah. How do we strengthen our ruling part in our daily lives? Well, the Stoics really liked journaling. Yeah. Taking some time each day mm -hmm. to reflect, oh. examine your thoughts, notice patterns in your behavior. It's like checking in with yourself. Yeah. Noticing bad habits. Exactly. What else can we do? Mm -hmm. What else? Mindfulness. Okay. Paying attention to the present moment without judging, mm -hmm. just noticing what you're feeling. So we're consciously choosing how to respond. Exactly. And that choice, yeah. that moment of awareness, yeah. that's where your power is. Powerful stuff. Marcus Aurelius reminds us, yeah. true happiness doesn't come from what's happening around you. Okay. It comes from within. Right. It's about being a good person, mm -hmm. living mm -hmm. in harmony with nature, right. and mastering your own mind. And as we've seen, yeah. that mastery doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. Yeah. Patience. Yeah. It yeah. takes a willingness to keep trying. Even when we mess up. Exactly. But it's worth it. Yeah. You'll have more peace, more mm -hmm. purpose. Yeah. More resilience. Even when things are tough. Exactly. And that's a great place to wrap up. I think so too. Yeah. It's been a really insightful look at chapter two. It has. And I encourage everyone listening. Yeah. To keep these principles in mind. Mm hmm. Notice how they show up in your life. In your interactions with others. Yeah. In the choices you make. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive. It's been a pleasure. And we'll see you next time.